Shimiso from Houston, Texas. There was only one unanswered question I had after watching the episode. One I wish the interviewer would have asked the producer during the interview they had after the episode aired, and that is, what was Villanelle's change of heart towards Constantine? She went from saying, I don't want you to die, we're not family, not only did she not intervene, but she also stopped Eve from intervening, almost as if she was prepared to watch him die and let Carolyn freely make that decision. We all know V changed her mind about leaving because she wanted to stay with Eve, but she didn't just tell him, no, I'm going to stay. But it seems she had some animosity towards him in her response. Did you notice the huge shift as well? If so, what do you think was the cause of that? Hmm. You know, I feel like it's a combination of two things that happened in between that moment when she says, to Constantine, I don't want you to die. And then that moment when she's like, I don't want to go with you because you're not family. One, she had that scene with Eve in the ballroom. There was like a clear noticeable acceptance from Eve regarding the entire being, the entire essence of who Villanelle was. I killed so many people, Eve. I know. So I feel like in that moment, Villanelle finally experienced for the first time really throughout the entire season, especially what it's like to not have some sort of like transactional interaction with someone, but for someone to like genuinely kind of look out for you and care in a way with no strings attached. Additionally to in that moment when she is seeing Carolyn trying to figure out all of her mess and there's just like, mess concerning Paul and then Constantine's there and it comes out like oh Constantine you like were there the day Kenny died like I, I feel like for Villanelle as a character there was kind of a moment where she's like she's not surprised with that notion that idea because she knows Constantine so well and she even said he doesn't kill people he makes other people do it for him so it's that idea of like of course he's messy. No surprise there. This is just reconfirming my personal belief that Constantine only cares about Constantine. So Villanova's was kind of like, well, let me just sit back here and enjoy the action unravel and unfold. So I think those two things specifically is kind of what contributed to that sudden change towards Constantine. Next question comes from Anna from Washington from Instagram. She says, do you think Constantine is Kenny's real father? Ah, uh, I don't know. That's hard. That's so lame of me to say, I don't know. I really don't. <sighs> it's hard for me to imagine if he knew that he was the father of Kenny, that he would be that heartless if he was somehow connected to Kenny's death because Constantine cares so much or at least like tries to care for Irina. So if he did know or realize that Kenny was his son, I just feel like that would be weird for him not to kind of afford that same like level of police or like at least afford some care and attention towards Kenny, even if, you know, Kenny doesn't for sure, for sure know. But additionally too, when Constantine puts his hand on Carolyn's like back, I felt like that was a very like intimate knowing moment between the two of them. And also Carolyn's reaction to when Constantine said that Kenny wanted to know if he was the father. Carolyn's reaction was like, oh, like she looked like really shook. So I don't know, I don't know, maybe Connor Roth, from the UK wants to know, why do you think a lot of the men that are close to Eve and Carolyn die? Connor has his own personal theory. He says, Villanelle knew her father and she said to her brother that he was a great man. Do you think Villanelle's love for her dad is the reason why she isn't responsible for killing close people to Carolyn and Eve? She did kill Bill at the beginning, but I think that was because she wasn't really close to Eve straight away. So why do I think men around Eve and Carolyn keep dying? I really think it's just because those two characters just so happen to have some sort of relationship or connection to men in their lives like carolyn obviously being the mother of, of kenny and eve being the wife of nico and also the friend of kenny it just kind of seems that those men in particular are unfortunately caught in the crossfires of the violence so that's my personal theory. The next questions, they're both fairly similar. One comes from Nikola from Serbia and the other comes from Twitter. Her name is Becca. Both of them essentially want to know what are my thoughts on Villanelle being a psychopath? Do I think she is a psychopath? 
Oh god, this is another hard one. Um, I feel like, first of all, I want to say I am not a psychologist, a psychiatrist. I am not professionally trained in that way. So this is just a random person, TV viewer's opinion on the matter. This is not a clinician's diagnosis. What I will say is I think a large theme of the show, or maybe an idea that we especially saw explored in season three, was nature versus nurture that idea of does the environment play a huge role and influence you in what you become or are you just born a particular way thinking about that i feel like the thing with villanelle is and also kind of the thing with eve is both of them always kind of had some sort of like darkness eve you know there was a little intrigue with the darkness i'm not quite sure if she had as much darkness as villanelle initially but there was you know darkness in both of them and we learned about the home life and environment that villanelle grew up in and what happened and i would not be surprised if the thing with villanelle is her environment further influenced the darkness to come out not only did she not get love from her mom she didn't get acceptance from her mom but she was also put in an environment that like encouraged her to kill and rewarded her for her kills and made her believe in the idea that she is only valuable if she kills. So for someone who longs for acceptance, that makes sense why she would then continue killing because society has told her that's the only purpose and value she serves. With that being said, I might make the argument I really don't think Villanelle is a psychopath. I think she is someone who was consistently told over and over and over again that you are a monster, you're a cold-hearted killer. It's kind of like that self-fulfilling prophecy idea. Like, if you believe you are that thing, you will become that thing. And I think that's what happened to Villanelle. Because clearly we see that she is capable of emotion, especially, you know, the season three finale really showed her ability to be selfless to a certain extent so yeah i don't know i don't know what do you guys think the next question comes from sean from instagram at sir turn underscore he wants to know what do you think of the show's admirable use of representation and sean is from london you know what for me especially as an american viewer is i feel like with shows here in the united states we still kind of make a big deal about oh my god isn't it amazing how diverse our cast is whereas it seems like with the british or european shows that i've seen they they really don't necessarily like make a big deal about it they're not like asking for a cookie in that way and being like look how diverse our show is like i i kind of like that they don't really make a big deal out of at least the diversity on screen it just simply is so i i really like that which is a nice segue into the next questions i have here so jamie from chicago illinois and simona from slovenia they want to know my thoughts about the backlash that the all white writers room got Woo! okay so so Asian woman on set. Were those... Well, that I'm totally used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to be. I am so used to being that. But I will say this. You know, I mean, we both. You know, we're going to talk about this later. But we all both came from Shondaland. You know what I mean? Like the UK. Yeah. I'm not afraid to say is behind. Behind. Mm. I am mm. not only the only Asian person on set. Sometimes it changes very exciting when that does someone comes on set mm -hmm. um but you know the, the 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 development of people behind the camera is very slow in the uk mm -hmm. um i don't know about the rest of europe so so it was a little sometimes it would be like <laughs> and like 75 white people you know and i i have not come from that i have not come from that in my you know um film career which has been much more independent and mostly we're working with women and women of color and my my relationship with television has not necessarily and in the united states have hasn't always been all white but being the sole asian person is a very uh familiar um place for me for me personally to my knowledge i'm pretty sure killing eve has had an all-white writer's room across every single season please correct me if i'm wrong with that being said despite now knowing that killing eve has an all-white writer's room i would hope in a future season that 
they try to diversify, add more color to that room and not just do it for the optics. But genuinely, if you are going to hire people of color, which I feel like you should, especially considering that your lead, one of your leads on the show is a woman of color, Asian specifically, that would be nice if you could then bring on an Asian writer to be part of the show because maybe that Asian writer could pick up on certain cultural nuances that maybe you as a white writer are unaware is even there. So it's that simple idea, if you know better, do better. So I'm not gonna hold the fact that they have an all white writers room against the show. I don't think that means the show is like, oh, they're racist. Like, I don't think that means that, but I just hope moving forward, they would try to diversify their writers room a bit more. There was some discussion online about the whiteness of the photo. Uh, which yeah. is something that all of us are talking about. We're all very sensitive to these matters. And I, yeah. I would love for you to just talk about what conversations have you had with your staff since then? Because this really just unfolded in a relatively short period. And it what, did. And yeah. just sort of take me, after it happened, which obviously there was no malintent with this post, but it certainly spurred interesting conversations. So tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, you're absolutely right. And thank you for asking about it because, you know, the, um, makeup of the room should be more racially diverse than it is and you know we're really aware of that and i take full responsibility for it you know you look at that room and it's it's full of brilliant female writers we've got a really strong lgbtq contingent but it's not good enough and we need to do better we should do better on a show like killing Eve should be able to do better um and we've all you know, had long talks and lots of soul searching. And, you know, we can come up with excuses, come up with platitudes. We can talk about the people that we've spoken about in the past, but we've got to do better. Um, and all of our writers know we're going to do better, but also the production, you know, from the ground up, the entire production we're looking at in terms of how we can make concrete change, because um, it's incredibly important to us. Um, and it's got to be change that lasts and is effective. Um, I think this is an extraordinary moment and we've got to make a difference. It's not good enough. And the next question we have is another bit of controversy that happened. Get Meg on Twitter and Gaia Louise from Italy wants to know essentially, what was my opinion and thoughts about Jodie Comer's statement regarding the bridge scene? I feel like they both walk away. and the outrage that occurred from fans who disagreed with her. Like, what are my thoughts on her answer? Both of them essentially want to know, like, what do I think that ending means? So first and foremost, I have to say, again, now going online and seeing how intense the Killing Eve fan base is, I would make a polite suggestion. Please do not disrespect the actors and actresses and creative team who are part of the show to the point where you like literally scare them off of being and engaging in social media. I think it's important that we respect every single person's opinions, even if they differ from our own, especially respecting the actresses who bring your favorite characters to life. So that's first and foremost what I would say. Leave Jodie Comer alone. <laughs> Leave Billy alone! Please. <laughs> My thoughts on her, I mean, you know, Valid. Jodie Comer plays Villanelle, and I feel like she knows Villanelle fairly well. I respect her opinion. Now, do I agree with it? I don't think so. Fingers crossed. I hope season four, series four, immediately picks up right after they look at each other. And I want, like, Eve to just be like, no, we're not doing this. Cause they've spent so much of the series like quite literally chasing after one another. And we got those moments visually too in season three when like the bus drives away, leaving Villanelle at the curb or the train, you know, continues off as like Eve is chasing after the train. Like we got that already. So with that being said, I won't be surprised. Maybe like after they look at each other on the bridge, 
maybe they like momentarily both walk away but then maybe Eve I hope it's Eve is like no this is silly or maybe they do both walk away but then later in the first episode of season four we see like Eve trying to find Villanelle I don't know I just feel like at this point like it's a bit of a retread if we don't see them actively try to choose one another without like there being another purpose to it like it's not like coming from a hunt purpose or it's not coming from a I need you to help me with this purpose but like I'm choosing you period and I feel like that's kind of like where they're at like they both come to that realization that they're so interconnected at this point how do you walk away from something like that once you come to that realization so next question is a voicemail hi hi Steffi aka in my humble opinion my name is Lily and I'm from Sofia, Bulgaria. I'm so sorry, your message, I heard the whole thing. It was wonderful, it was great. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the positive compliments. I'm just gonna cut quickly to your question. My question for you is, do you think that what Eve said to Villanelle at the end of season two, episode eight, in particular that she does not understand what love is, is actually what triggered Villanelle to find out more about her family, about her past, about why she is the way she is and whether she can actually feel love and, and just feelings in, in general and just made her want to taste this normalcy. Uh, she was so desperately craving because I feel like, especially now that Bill now knows that, that Eve is alive, she 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 wants to face Eve and, and, ex and be able to express her love in, in, in a non-mannequin, humane manner compared to what happened in the season two finale, which was just utterly just maddening and devastating. So yeah, do you think there's a connection there or am I just completely out of my mind and over obsessing and over analyzing which might be the case as well <laughs> i'm i'm not denying it oh my gosh okay i think no you are completely right i feel like you're personally right on the money with that i won't be surprised if um after eve told villanelle that that kind of in a way sparked villanelle's arc for season three that's a heavy thing to tell someone especially to be told that by someone who is the object of your obsession of your affection so yeah man I, I don't really know what else to add to that i think you are totally right on the money with that we are now in the villain eve section of the the questions here if you haven't noticed so lynn from athens georgia wants to know do you think there's going to be any romantic thing going to happen between eve and villanelle in season four or are they just going to be bffs okay so i personally feel like if the show were to just make even Villanelle BFFs at this point, and especially now being on the internet and seeing where the discourse is with a lot of the, the viewers, I don't think that's gonna be a good creative choice. And I'm not saying like pander to the even Villanelle shippers, but I just feel like at this point in the story, for them after all of this, just be like, let's just be best friends like it kind of feels like a cop-out like they're they're scared to go there so i'm not saying like i think they should live happily ever after together and everything is gonna be peachy keen and fine but let's go we're in season four now so yeah if they just go the bffs route which i hope they don't yeah I think they're at this point in the story where there is like a very clear romantic thing happening between even villanelle so let's Let's go there. Valerie is from Colombia. Wants to know, would you say that you're fully on the Villeneuve train now or are you still a little on the fence? Kaz, I know Kaz, wants to know, do you ship Villeneuve? So yeah, I mean, I'm totally on the Villeneuve, I would say bus. <laughs> I'm on the Villeneuve bus for sure. I know it took me a while to get there and I think that was kind of the beauty of um, <laughs> recording my, my reaction to the show over the, the course of these last couple of weeks is you really do see an evolution of me being like, I don't know about this even Villanelle and I really don't know about this Villanelle. I swear to you, I haven't looked at any spoilers, but it seems like there's so many people who really like Villanelle and I haven't gotten to that point yet. To so me being like, oh my gosh, yes, even Villanelle, like let's, let's go, I'm on the bus. Villanelle, one of my favorite characters. So I am there, hashtag Villanelle. I'm on the bus, I'm on the bus. 
level two. I'm fully on the bus now. Now do I think if and when they get together or if they try to make it work somehow that that means it's forever and no problems will ever arise? No, I don't think that. I don't even quite know if the series is gonna end with the two of them together to be honest but I definitely am now accepting the pain that's going to come with shipping Villanelle and Eve. Roberta from Sao Paulo also wants to know, I noticed that at first in season one, it seemed you were not completely hooked by Villanelle's character and possibly not into the villain Eve ship. But then in one of the season three videos, you said that you finally got there and you were shipping them. What and when do you think that changed for you? When do you think you started to cheer for Villanelle? So I feel like I started to cheer for Villanelle sometime in season two, once we got that character to like a low. I just felt like really fucking bad for her, honestly. <laughs> well, I'm gaining a lot of sympathy for Villanelle this episode. I got you what you wanted, but thank you for being nice. <gasps> you don't understand what that is. I do. Never mind. It was very endearing to see Villanelle be quote unquote weak to someone, especially since in season one, she seemed so indestructible in that way. And I always think it's interesting when you get the character who seems to have such a shield of armor around her, suddenly like there's a chink. We find a little bit of a weakness and a vulnerability, and then we see how that affects the character in subsequent episodes. So that would be for me when I started to really, really like Villanelle. As far as when I started to ship Villanelle and Eve. I also feel like I was on that train come season two, but then Villanelle shot Eve. And honestly, at that point, I was kind of, I remember being a bit annoyed with Eve because I felt like Eve was really leading Villanelle on. Like she was doing so many things, but then would say something completely different. I kind of like don't blame Villanelle for being frustrated, honestly, that Eve just keeps running away from her emotions. And it's really interesting that Eve keeps blaming Villanelle, saying, you want to be like this, blah, 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 blah. Like, I guess, yes, in a sense, Villanelle did want her like this, but also low-key, Eve, you wanted to be like that too. This is gonna sound so extreme, but I feel like after the bus scene, honestly, is when I started to ship Villanelle. Now we finally get confirmation, at least, from Eve. I mean, for me, she initiated the kiss. After that, the bus scene is what sold me. <laughs> I must say, I cannot believe you all waited like three years for these characters to kiss. Like I was so spoiled. It only took me a couple couple days, a couple weeks. And they're, you know, here they are kissing, but you guys, you guys waited three years for that. So holy shit, good job to you. So our next question is voicemail. Okay, so the first <laughs> message was what do you think the relationship between Villanelle and Eve is gonna be like next season because the finale basically okay that showed that they don't want to be apart from one another but both of them are still trying to elude the 12 and their relationship hasn't been normal up to this point so I personally don't foresee it becoming some type of normal relationship and I think it's only going to be more complicated because Villanelle is trying to get out of working for the 12. But I want to know what your opinion of like what that relationship is going to look like next season is. Also, I'm curious to know what do you think Villanelle on her own is going to be like in this next season? Because, okay, this season was basically an in-depth character analysis, basically, or showing why she's the way she is, what made her that way, and why she doesn't want to do this anymore. But in the next season, do you think that she's going to resort back to doing what she doesn't want to do? Or do you think that they're going to explore basically her trying to get out of working for the 12 and get away from the 12 for good? Ooh, okay. So I'm also going to show these two questions here. One's from Ava Sarala 2020 from Croatia as well as LDD Louis from London. So I feel like basically these groups of questions concern what are my predictions for season four. So I feel like specifically in terms of like Villanelle and Eve's, what is that relationship gonna be like? Here's my prediction. This is where I think they might go. Maybe Eve and Villanelle, they have a common goal here. Or at least even though despite Carolyn telling Eve, like Eve, get out now because like you're never going to figure out who the 12 are. 
I feel like somehow even Villanelle are going to work together to fight a common antagonist that's shared between them. It might be the 12, them trying to get away from the 12. I'm sure like Helene won't be too happy when she finds out that Villanelle got rid of Rayanne. Or you know what? Oh my gosh, now I'm like, oh, I'm second guessing. I wonder if maybe Villanelle and Eve are gonna work together for some reason. I don't know what that reason will be, but maybe like, Eve, she has this unwavering desire to find the 12 and hunt them down. And maybe Villanelle... Mm, gosh, I really don't know. Oh, you know what? Maybe that's where the tension is. Maybe Villanelle... Like, I don't think, like, Villanelle and Eve are gonna be, like, you know, full-on girlfriends. Like, let's, like, have lunch dates with each other and do all the coupley things. Like, I don't think it's gonna be that kind of relationship. But we're gonna see them maybe hopefully, fingers crossed, together a little bit more this season. And I maybe there might be a conflict of interest there between the two of them with Villanelle wanting to get away from the 12 and not wanting to, to have to do anything with the 12, whereas like Eve wants to find the 12. And maybe it's always gonna be this constant struggle of like Eve's darkness more or less kind of encouraging Villanelle to resort back to who she she is but yet also Villanelle like trying not to give in to that side of herself anymore and Eve maybe kind of having a problem with that because to Eve it's sort of like the means justifies the ends so I wonder I mean I don't know if that's a really great prediction that's kind of where I, I see that evolving so yeah I don't know I hope that answers your question I don't know if that was good as far as like more predictions I hope we see more of Eve maybe I mean if we got a standalone Villanelle episode this season, it would be great if we got a standalone Eve episode this season. Yeah, maybe Constantine is still gonna be on the run. Learn a little bit more about Carolyn. I'm really bad at like predictions for the season. Like if I go from episode to episode, I think I'm much better at predicting versus like, all right, here's a full season. What do you think is gonna happen? So I don't know. Let me know your, your predictions about what you wanna see in season four.